Hello, hello, hello. You are tuning into another episode of The Wonderkin Show. Today's topic by by Deshaun Jackson. He's gone, guys. He is gone. He's not coming back. So there's no more help coming to our wide receiver corpse. <sighs> but you know what you can expect back? Nick Boyle! That's who you can expect back! Jesus Christ! But you know what? I am going to go that far into it yet. We're going to... Woo-sa. Where's my ears? Woo-sa. We're going to go into this one. And we're going to hear what John Harbaugh himself... Himself! Had to say... About the letting go of Nick Boyle and Deshaun Jackson, and maybe the re the reunion with Nick Boyle and not Deshaun Jackson. So, without further ado, let's get started. Here we go. Yeah, right. That's a great question. I mean, Nick's a guy that's been here for a long time. You know, we've been through a lot. Nick is playing good football, even this year. He's played a lot of football this year. So it's a roster move that we had to make. Uh, we have some options with that, you know, in terms of uh, bringing him back or possibly the practice squad, things like that. So uh, I, I would still say Nick's still in our plans, you know. Deshaun, I just can't say enough about Deshaun. I just uh, really enjoyed being around him. You know, he's, he's a... He's a, he's a good guy, you know, and a fun guy to be around and a competitive guy. And, and I'm just kind of appreciative that we had a chance to, to, to get to know him a little bit because I never really knew him, you know, throughout the course of, of – you know, our cross never really – paths never really crossed. So um, – but we'll just be moving forward from there on that. Oh, God. <laughs> oh. <laughs> So, with a tight end room that has Kohler, that has Andrews, that has Likely, Patrick Ricard chips in, and you also have Oliver, you're willing to bring back a slow, past his prime tight end over a receiver and a receiver on a receiving depleted team that has proven that they cannot make plays even when the ball is in their hands? Old or not? Old or not? I cannot wait. I, listen, I'm at the point now where I can't wait for them to leave. Like John Harbaugh, he needs to go. EDC, he needs to go. This is foolishness. Like, imagine you saying that a player who is oft injured delivers nothing in the past game, barely delivers anything in the run game anymore, but you're willing to bring them back over a player, a veteran none the least, that you're barely paying anything to that is still capable of making plays in the past game for your team. Oh, he was a nice guy. He was so fly. Together we touched the sky. But yeah, well, he's not coming back here. Jesus God. And y'all don't see nothing wrong with that? Um <laughs> uh, they I'ma show you how comfortable John Harbaugh EDC and Greg Roman is. They saw the abhorrent, absolutely deplorable disgusting, inept performance of the wide receiving core just this past Sunday. And they, you know what they said? They're good enough to go into the playoffs with. They're good enough to make a playoff run with. These are all the weapons, if Lamar Jackson returns, that he would need. And we sit here and they say, we don't know nothing about football because we're just the people at the end of the bar. Hey, yo. <laughs> yo, listen, bro. 
<laughs> Yo, I swear, bro, the, the amount of slaps that have to go out throughout Baltimore, man, it would sound like the front bench of a congregation of, of Christians uh, catching the Holy Spirit. I mean, it would just be, oh, 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 that's all you would hear. Listen, to be fair, because I'm always fair and I'm always transparent, I never wanted Deshaun. I said, go and get him an actual target, a, a young target, right? But even Deshaun was proven that he was able to make more big plays than any other wide receiver not named Sammy Watkins on this team, right? And you decide that that's something that you will not need in the playoffs, even forget receiving. In crucial situations, if you need a crazy kick return or something like that, electricity from it, you can put Deshaun Jackson back there. You're telling me that you don't need that in the playoffs? You're just comfortable with what you've seen on tape? On tape. You can't even say enough about the poor, putrid performance of the wide receiving core. I want y'all to understand this. On Sunday, that third string quarterback attempted 44 passes. 44! 44. And the wide receivers only accounted for what? Three catches? Four catches? <laughs> Yo, it's, listen, I, and, and, and don't think, oh, well, maybe they weren't targeted. What's his name? Drop like six or seven passes, and you can go look it up. You remember the PFF that you guys loved so much? And I'm supposed to think that they have the future of this organization in the right hands? No. Oh, no. No, 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 no. This is, this is beyond blasphemous at this point. They are looking at us and saying that we are dumb. You don't know what you're seeing. You don't even know what you're hearing. The media, they don't know what they're talking about either. We know what's best for this team. And having actual viable threats on the outside is not helping this team. Having threats that can actually catch the ball is not having this team. Having threats that can actually make plays are not helping this team. Having threats that can take pressure off the run game is not helping this team. But that's what they are seeing. As short a time as you were here, uh, Deshaun Jackson, um, thank you for your contribution. It was nice to know you while you were here, even though I was one of the ones that were not wanting you to be here because I did not want anybody that had AARP cards here, but you still made plays. And I commend you, sir. I truly do commend you. But when it comes to this coaching staff, this team building of rosters, what I think is that Deshaun, personally, let me tell you what really happened. Because we know what happened. He probably complained and said, look, put me out there. We need to keep throwing the ball. Put the ball in my hands. Let me make a play. And they said, no, 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 no. Nick Boyle can make plays. Patrick Ricard can make plays. You, you, you five, you five, nine guy, you block for them. Yo, it's so frustrating watching this team sometimes, bro, because nobody thinks like that. Nobody. It's like watching somebody that has so much promise, so much potential, so much going for them, and they continuously just shoot themselves, not in the foot, both feet, not in the hands, both hands, not in the nose, but in the face. I swear, at this point, yo, I take back whatever I said about Terrell Owens. Bring him on. <laughs> yo, hey, yo. Yo, at this point, bring on Terrell Owens. <laughs> yo, listen, bro. <sighs> I can't take it no more. I am willing to to get wide receivers with osteoporosis, right, setting in on this team. I'm serious with you, bro. I don't understand, bro. Yo, gosh, yo, listen. I'll tell you right now, when that pack 
that uh, Terrell Owens has been signed by the Ravens hit, I'm going to be on some. <laughs> Yo! Oh, my God, bro. Oh, my God. I really can't take them, bro. Oh, my. Like, imagine this. Just imagine what you saw. The fumbling, the drops, <laughs> the non-ability to create yak. And you said that's a playoff caliber wide receiving core. <laughs> how do how do they how how and why are they still employed? <laughs> like even in the old days, they would have been like, nah, this 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 this. Oh my god, this room is horrible. Behind us, bro. My daughter has been watching nothing but Encanto, bro. And I got this song stuck in my head, and I just want to remix it to everything that the Ravens are, bro. I'm ready. Come on, I'm ready. I've been steadfast and stay back and steady. Bless me now, like you blessed us all those years ago. When you gave us a miracle. And the miracle was Ray Lewis and now Lamar Jackson. You gave us a miracle. <laughs> Cheer me. <laughs> Woo, you, yo, listen. Don't act like y'all didn't like that. Don't act like you didn't like that. Don't act like you didn't like that. <laughs> like, yo, bro. The, uh, li li we're literally living on a prayer. I can use different songs for this, bro. I swear to God, I can't. Like, we are living on a prayer, waiting on a miracle, and the prayer and the miracle, all is surrounding Lamar becoming a literal Saiyan or Kryptonian right before our very eyes. And then, and then, learning how to use his abilities on the level of Rey from Star Wars. You remember the girl who all of a sudden was given all the Force abilities that quick? And that would be the only way we would actually be able to make a Super Bowl run. And the worst part about it is the fan base, if Lamar Jackson comes back and fails, will blame him. We'll blame him. We'll say, oh, that's why he's not worth the money. That's why he's not worth the money. Yeah, he might have rushed for 100 yards. Yeah, he might have do for three. But he couldn't get us to win. He's, he's not good in the playoffs. He can't win. We, he's not worth it. Bruh. This is why... I've actually heard this. I've actually heard some people say they don't want Lamar to come back simply because if we lose with Lamar, they'll just blame Lamar. That's how sickening a lot of the people in this fan base have become. Because what those people are thinking is exactly what would happen. If we, if Lamar Jackson came back, and let's say he played a hard-fought game, two, three touchdown passes, 200 and something, 100 yards rushing, made all the play, but then you saw all the drops and everything else. Because he didn't win... They would just say that Lamar can't win in the playoffs. They would just say Lamar can't deliver the goods in the playoffs. He can't elevate his team in the playoffs. And that would be the narrative, not only of the media, but of the actual team that he plays for. The actual fan base that watches him. That's why I am sickened. I'm angry. I'm frustrated, and at this point, I'm tired, right? Because all of us, we're watching everything happening, and we're all just being like, bro, <laughs> we only have one, one course of winning on Sunday. The Bengals know it. The NFL world knows it. The coach that goes to press conferences and openly lies and openly calls people that watch and cheer for the Ravens, people at the bottom of the bar, he knows it. But let's just keep living in la-la land. I heard all you have to do is click your red, your red sandals together, and guess what? You'll come right back home. Sickening, bro. Sickening, yo. I just want to end on this. We're willing to bring back Nick Boyle with an overabundance of tight ends, but not Deshaun Jackson. 
And that was another episode of the Wonderkin Show. You guys are amazing. Thank you for showing up. You can be anywhere else in the world, but you're here with me, and you know I appreciate that. I truly do. Please do remember for everyone first watching, like, subscribe, hit the notification bell, right? And leave a comment. We all leave comments and make sure that you're respectful to the people that you're commenting with. And we all have good days and bad days, but make sure we keep it respectful amongst each other. And if you would like to help out the channel grow even further than it already has, you can actually leave a donation right there. The QR code is on the screen and if you need the cash app actual title for it it's money sign the wonderkin show so once again this is the wonderkin show this is nitro signing off and you guys knows my slogan peace and i am out of here hopefully like everybody that's a coach and front office executive for the ravens yeah